Always a nervous time, uh, Alec, isn't it? Yes, it's just one of them things now, Ray. Everything will be going through these lads' minds. They've never been to Wembley in, in the club's history, and uh, some of these lads, you can see the nerves there. They're, they're trying to kind of put it out of the mind, but deep down inside, all they want to do is get on with the game. Yes, yeah, some people do a lot of talking to sort of cover it up. Some people sit in corners and, uh, and keep quiet. Well, you can see that uh, this is a young boy, young Casey. Look at the strapping this lad's got on. Big lad to start off with, uh, but... You know, nerves will play a big part in that dressing room, Ray, and it's all about the experienced players who can calm the lads down and say, now, look, you know, this is what we've got to do. We've never been to Wembley before. Let's go out and just enjoy it. Little Brett Clark in the corner there in the red and white jersey. Experienced Wembley. With St Helens. Well, we've got him there, Brett. I mean, Brett's been, uh, you know, to uh, Wembley once. I brought him back uh, to play at Wembley. Didn't have the best of games, but he looked to be back there. He'd, he'd love to go back. Well, Alec, you'll certainly remember one gentleman having the best of games at Wembley. Here, Ellery Hanley on the pitch for the Eddie Waring Memorial Trophy, the trophy for the best try of the season, about to be presented by Tony Waring, the son of my predecessor, and how the Wigan and Great Britain skipper deserved that. I'm sure that unforgettable try at Wembley at least Forgettable probably by you, Ali, but nevertheless well, to everybody else. I never want to see it again, Ray. I don't ever want to see the fella again, never mind the try. I mean, this is the last thing I really want, Tell the only scoring. I had a miserable bit to start oh, off yes. with, and I don't think this is helping. Uh, I think the lads have done this in the studio just to get me going. <laughs> it's a very similar try, that, to the try-making run that he did against St. Thomas in the semi-final. Well, he's a world-class player, and he looks like a world-class player. He's a thoroughbred through and through. So... The presentation's over, crowd anticipating a tremendous, uh, tremendous match, very evenly balanced match. I mean, everyone has been saying to you and I, you know, who's going to win? And, you know, I think I've just got to lean in towards Oldham myself now. Well, Ray, you always go for the underdogs. I'm going to go for Warrington. <laughs> I'm going for Warrington because I think uh, experience will tell in the end. And I think there's going to be a lot of nerves out there. And it's the team that want to go to Emily the most that will win this game because uh, it's all about luck. Who kicks the goals, who has the bounce of the ball? This game is about winning. Wembley's about playing. Yep, it is. And just look at those uh, youngsters there. They say rugby league is a family game, and certainly it is. Perfect conditions, ideal. Warrington and Oldham supporters mixed together, anticipating a tremendous battle. And it certainly will be. Oldham might be second division side but they've toppled a few first division sides this uh, this season Salford have already felt the lash and Helens have and Wigan have and why are spectators one or two trains from Warrington this morning packed with the primrose and blue not been at Wembley for 15 years but a very proud record in this Silk Cup Challenge Cup Warrington, of course, lost last season in the semi-final. Very unlucky. And here, Oldham, John Cogger, the skipper. From Western Suburbs, Runcorn Highfield. A team Alec picked up for very little money by Tony Barrow. Yes, he's done some very astute signings today, and there's one or two lads out there. You can just look at the faces now, and you can see the tension on the faces. And this is what it's going to be all about. How quick these lads can settle down and get into the rhythm. Yes, and Tony Barrow more nervous than anybody, I think. The coach there going through, he really was ashen white before they, uh, before they came out. Tremendous roar from this Oldham contingent. As I said, a second division side, but nevertheless with a first division pedigree, especially with blonde players like that, John Cogger. 24 tries, that skipper, he's a danger man. Very light for a forward, barely 13 stone, but nevertheless a real danger. To Warrington, and there's some pace in this side, Alec, isn't there? Yes, they've got uh, they've got some class, but uh, let's not forget, Ray. We've also got Warrington, and there's also some class in this side. Mick Gregory walking out now. This lad's never been to Wembley. It's the only medal he's not got. Tony Burke there, and this is the man, Desi Drummond. Everybody will have to watch. Certainly, and I think this is the man as well, Bob Jackson, the destroyer of Oldham in the Lancashire Cup final. He was the powerhouse, and it was when Jackson was up for four months that. The Warrington form side. Number three there, very important guy, Kiwi Gary Mercer. And Oldham, of course, Tony Barrow, chosen a team from full strength. 
no problems with this Oldham side. The back row trio there, Keith Newton, Sean Allen and John Cogger, cost barely £34,000. But 39 tries from them this season, that shows how dangerous they, they're going to be. And drama today in this Warrington side. At 12 o'clock today, young Paul Bishop was there, pencilled in at number seven at scrum half. He's fallen through a window at home, 20 stitches in his right arm, and an urgent telephone call from ex Wigan St Patrick's amateur Martin Crompton brings him in. A lot of pressure on this lad, Martin Crompton, Alec, isn't there? Number seven. Yes, this is going to be a really big day. I, I don't think this lad, uh, you know, had to worry about like he's going to go to Wembley and might be playing at Wembley. Uh, young Bishop has uh, he's missed the game because of a very, very serious injury. And he'll certainly have a handful of with this lad, Mike Ford from Oldham. Uh, I mean, this boy Ford, Great Britain, in uh, tour in 1984. This is the lad that Crompton's got to look after. Well, he has, it because uh, he's never been to Wembley, Michael Ford, and he's played in Australia, he's played at Wigan, he'll want to do well here, eh? This is his, uh, was his own club, and uh, he won a big game today. So, a lot of pressure on these two scrum halves. And there is the lad, just adjusting. Probably just checking as he got his uh, socks on. He was drafted in so late, Alan. He's not a bad player, this lad, Ray. I think they'll miss uh, young uh, Bishop. I think his drop goals are going to be... Could be crucial for who's going to win the match. But this lad will let nobody down. He's had a lot of bad injuries during the season. He's picking up himself up again now. And he's looking for a big game. And usually, people come in for debuts like this, don't they? Well, this is what Wembley's made about. It's made about... Uh, he looks like a bit of a film star, doesn't he, this kid? <laughs> he's a tremendous-looking guy. And certainly no film star, but uh, a top-class referee, John Holdsworth from Kipax. Handle the 1987 Challenge Cup final, just laying down the instructions to two very experienced captains there. On the left, in the primrose and blue, Mike Gregory. And number 13, the blonde-haired destroyer, they call him, John Cogger. And I think what... Uh, Mr Holdsworth will be saying, Alex, is, look, I want an open game in conditions like this. Yes, and it's also nice, Ray, this toss is going to be very important because, uh, you know, it, it's important that we, we win the toss and which way we play. Obviously, it looks as though uh, all of them have won the toss. So... The crowd ready, eager, anticipating... The second Silk Cup Challenge Cup semi-final. And a very big crowd here at Central Park. All the stand tickets sold. Terraces full. And both sets of spectators at least happy at the kickoff. Good run by Mercer. Well, Alec, I understand this lad could have had a couple of injections in his ankle this morning. Well, he uh, he's just shows you how much he means to Warrington. He's a very, very good player. Now, this is going to be an important start to the game. Who plays the six tackles and how long for? Steve Malloy just driving in. The forwards testing each other out. And I think the kick from Dwayne Mann, kicking for position. Duncan Platt, full back there, just getting a good steady hold of the ball. Oh, good run. Oldham coach Tony Barrow recommends us to look at this lad, number five, very dangerous player. Well, offside. Paul Lord, originally a standoff. Now then, is Mike Gregory asking for a kick to a goal, I think he is, I think it's well worth it points on the board at this stage a tremendous spur difficult kick for Rocky Turner 86 goals this season but a kick with pressure on what? 46, 47 yards off. No. no. Well worth the effort, though, I think, Alan. Yes, and uh, them are the stats where, you know, to go to Wembley, you've got to kick goals like that. 
and I'm, it's interesting just to see that so the way Oldham starts, you know, there's one or two nerves out there, and it's the team who set them down quickest who's going to get the best result of this game. Des Drummond. A real veteran in the game, but still running as strong as ever. Bob Jackson. These forwards, as I said, just sorting each other out, just getting a feel of the ball, getting used to the tackle. And Mr Holdsworth getting used to his whistle. Offside. Warrington so near in last year's semi-final until we had that Joe Lydon drop goal sinking their hopes. Tony Burke, good run. These Warrington forwards look to set off at a good pace, Alec. Well, they look as though they're, uh, they're about half a stone a man bigger than the Oldham pack, and I think this is very, very important, the way these two settle down. Warrington look as though they've got into the rhythm very quickly. Turner. Oh, bad miss by Drummond. Drummond almost had part of an overlap there. The sort of yardage that a class winger like that just needs. in the first scrum. Mr Holdsworth judging there that the... Warrington prop, Tony Burke, collapsing the scrum. And Andy Platt. Well, I said Andy Platt. It's Duncan Platt. It's his brother Andy, who well, we're normally used to seeing on this pitch, aren't we? Yes, you have, but uh, you've got the family right there, that's uh, one good thing. <laughs> but having said that, uh, I bet they wished he had Andy playing on that pitch, because he's a very, very good forward, and so is Duncan. John Fieldhouse, another good forward, very experienced forward. Used to play for Warrington, and St Helens. Seen service at Wembley himself. Allen. High tackle by Mann, but round the chest. Good kick by Ford. Peggy Waddington back. Oh, that's a good kick. Poor David Lyon, the fullback, couldn't call with that kick. We said these two scrum halves would have a battle. Round one to Mike Ford. Mr. Holmesworth just getting the, the scrums back. Drummond. Very powerful winger, this lad. Doesn't uh, carry a big build, but uh, very, very powerful. A judo instructor. And I think uh, Mr. Holmesworth there are judging uh, a foul tackle on it. Yes, I think uh, you couldn't have a better referee than John Oldsworth for this game. He's a top-class referee, he's done no-nonsense, and you can see the uh, young Lions, he's got a, a knock already, Ray, just looking around the eye. He looks as though he's banged himself on the ground. And it could be a sign of nerves, but Oldham already conceding the penalties, three so far. Yes, it's about discipline, and, uh, you know, this semi-final's not going to be an easy game, not an easy game to tip, but it's about team second the chances. Crompton, oh, good play! to Bob Jackson now then looking for that support he's got it in Mercer but good cover good cover so Crompton replies for Waddington Wires on the attack Sanderson that's good to man the long ball to Drummond Certainly Des Drummond looks uh, fired up, doesn't he? A little bit uh, too fired up, I think. I think you'll find John Oldwood to angle this. He'll just get him out of the way. And, and when he's finished, he'll just say, now listen, settle down, son. It's going to be a penalty. Des had no need to go in there and didn't half let one go, and yeah. Well, I must confess, I couldn't see any reason for that whatsoever. No, I think that's just touching way. It's one of them things where it's a semi-final of the Challenge Cup. They both want to go and tension's running a little bit high. And, uh, well... I think yeah, Mr. Holsworth are judging a little bit of 50 50. Ford. Oldham, no strangers to the Cup final. They have made seven appearances and won the trophy three times, although they were all done many, many years ago before Wembley became the venue in 1929.
Duncan Platt again. Oh, really a silly pass from the Desdrum, and he would just have been better taking the tackle, I think, Alan. Not, not be too happy about that. He's made two mistakes in the last few minutes, and uh, really that was the first tackle, and you do not lose the ball on the first tackle. Desdrum not be very happy about that. So, Oldham scrum, head and ball. Good scrum. And good play again by Crompton, uh, spotting Cogger coming round the blind side. Leo Casey. Richard Russell, number nine. A, a centre wing converted to hooker. Forward, that's a good ball to Platt. Both of these sides, two very strong, very tight defences. And the sixth tackle. Forward. Again, that's a good one. It's a dicey one, well taken. Well taken there by David Lyon. And of course, when you take the ball now in your in-goal area, it's a tap on the 25 yard. I think it's good thinking by young David Lyon that uh, Ray he took the ball over his line, so he's got a 25 yard tap, saved his forwards a little bit of work, and this is going to be very important today because it's very warm out there, the ground's a little bit hard, and it's going to take a lot out of some of these lads. Warrington just got the one victory over Oldham early in the season. They played each other in the Lancashire Cup. 24 points to 16, but certainly defences are on top at the moment. And that's why there's so much kicking, Alec. Yes, I think it's territorial advantage, Ray. It's going to go one way or another, but uh, this is what it's all about, just playing the six tackles. There's going to be some very, very heavy tackling for the first ten minutes. And Mr Holsworth uh, a judging that Gary Mercer dumped the Oldham player down. He's not having it, very efficient. Just coming up for ten minutes and just the one break, Alec. That just shows you the uh, strength of the tackling. Yes, it's uh, it has been some good tackling, but it's also about creating chances, and there's not been too many in this game. I think you'll see now that uh, to put points on the board, both sides are going to have to let the ball out wide. Forward. Desfoy. Neither side looking able to penetrate, but of course, the longer this game goes on, the warmer it gets, and the more tired. That these players become that's when the gaps emerge Leo Casey number eight looking for a good game here a contender for the Great Britain tour to New Zealand that's a good ball well if it would have been a good ball if the centre had taken it good cover Yes, good cover by Crompton, a good kick by Ford, well taken by Crompton. But again, a penalty to Warrington. Oldham offside, not allowing the, the catcher five yards. Still no score. Both sides taking the ball short with the packs, uh, Alec, aren't they? Yes, well, I think what you'll see now is, uh, you know, moving this ball out. And this is a lovely break by young Crompton and good support there by Mann. So, Crompton having the game of his life so far. Gregory. But strong run by this Great Britain player, Mike Gregory. Warrington's first real attacking stretch. Good movement. Touch. Warrington certainly moving this ball about when they get the chance. Yes, there's a, you know, the, it, it's good marking from both sides there. What you've got to worry about now is, is, is penetration, and uh, obviously Warrington know that an early score is very, very important just to settle them down a little bit. 
That's a good heel. And Ford coming away again from this uh, scrum. Really being given too much leeway around the scrum. Cogger. Likes to run from the acting half-back position, like most Australian forwards, always like to check it away from the rook. Another good kick. Stopped this time by Lyon. Crompton again. Both sides defensively moving in from the centres, cutting down the options, coming in very, very quickly on the outside. So it's, it's difficult to make breaks out wide, Alex. Yes, both sides obviously have uh, had the tackling bags out all week and it's very, very important uh, part of the game. But they, they are going to have to make breaks and support the man with the ball. And the lad who looks to be making the breaks is this number seven, Crompton, who's been brought in at the last minute. Well, that can happen, you know, when uh, lads come in, they normally win the man of the match and, and, and go on from there. But uh, young Crompton's playing very, very well indeed. Man. Very ambitious drop goal from uh, Dwayne Mann there, the New Zealand hooker. We saw him in the Test Series in October. Just signed a new two-year contract with Warrington. Very powerful player. But really a little ambitious, that, Alec. Yes, well, I think they'll miss young uh, Paul Bishop for the drop goal. He's the drop goal expert. But uh, it's interesting now to see some of these young lads. There's Leo Casey there. Uh, there's one or two reputations on the line today. Warrington just seem to have all them in a stranglehold at the moment. Ford again electing to kick. And I think uh, Mike Ford, uh, uh, Alec, that's four or five times we've seen the kick. And really, he's had to kick because there's no momentum going forward with the pack, is there? Well, I think you can realise that it's, uh, it, the Oldham forwards are uh, half a stone a man lighter than the, the Warrington. Uh, you know, and that is going to be very important. The longer the game goes on, it's going to be tougher, and uh, Mike Ford realises that. Oh, that's a bad knock-on. Bad knock-on there by uh, Young Turner, snatched at the ball. Just 15 minutes gone, still no points on the board. Oldham nil, Warrington nil. Sean Allen, number 12 here. Not seen a lot so far, but this lad again got some speed. I think that's the difference between the two packs, Alec, isn't it? Warrington's got the size and Oldham Packers has the speed. Yes, and, uh, you know, everything's going to revolve around this lad who's got the ball now. Uh, number seven, uh, Mike Ford. He's going to be the lad who's going to make the gaps and uh, put people through him. Fieldhouse. And a six tackle. Worth a drop goal, I think. There's the attempt. Oh, it was a bad one. <laughs> Tess Drummond again, having a real battle with uh, Paul Lord here, number five for Oldham. Sanderson. That's a good tackle. From under, good pass. Mercer. Well judged by uh, Duncan Platt. Very well judged. Now then, has he got the pace to go on, Mercer? No. Richard Irving, number two, first touch of the ball. 22 years old, amateur, ex-amateur. Forward, looks for support. Not playing the ball. 
Referee, Mr. Holsworth. Penalty to Warrington. Judging there that the Oldham player not playing the ball correctly, playing it on his knees, just rolling it between his legs. You have to be stood upright and the ball must be dropped to the floor. Very silly penalty to give away, Alec. Well, it's a bad position of uh, penalty, Ray, but uh, of the two sides, uh, Warrington look as though they've got their act together a little bit better than uh, Oldham at this moment in time. I think Nerves has got a big part to play in this game because one or two of the Oldham lads look as though they're struggling a little bit. Well, that could have been a try, I think, if Sanderson could have got that ball away. That could have been a try, I think, for number 10 there, Steve Malloy. Very well worked move, obviously rehearsed and practised in midweek. Ford again. And every time this little lad gains 10, 15 yards from the scrum. Yes, I think Mike Gregory's got to close him down a little bit better than what he is doing. He's uh, giving him plenty of room around the scrums and you just can't let a player of this calibre do that. Well, John Fieldhouse, obviously number 10 there, frustrated, upset at himself. I think also, Ray, what you've got to look at in this game is uh, first division and a second division side. All of them who have uh, been running away with matches, I don't think played if top-level football like Warrington's been playing, and I think there might be a yard of pace difference. Mercer, that's a good one. Ooh, good tackle, good tackle there, boy. John Henderson stopped the movement for Warrington. Bob Jackson. Both sides still probing, prodding, looking for the opening. But this Warrington pack making inroads. Sanderson. Each one of these forwards, Alec, for Warrington can make 10 yards. That's the yes, difference, I, isn't it? I certainly think that Warrington uh, look the better of the two sides at the moment. They look as though they're creating and playing for each other. They've got more idea with the ball in their hands. But all credit to Oldham, the tackling's there. And the situation saved again. Knock on, on the sixth tackle, no scrum, a handover. I think Ray, that's uh, where they're going to miss young Paul Bishop because I think if he'd have been on the field, a drop goal would have been on the cards then. Oh, well attempted pass, but uh, well picked up by Warrington. Now then, what can Warrington do? Steve Malloy driving in again, and just look at the power of these two props. Tony Burke and here, number 10, Steve Malloy. Turner, Mercer. Here again, Alec, look, Oldham are going one forward, one forward, yet they've got two very, very quick centres in Foy and uh, Henderson. They've hardly touched the ball. Now then, here's some pace, he's got the wingman Irving. And, and that's just what I was talking about, Alec, where really Oldham should be attacking from. Yes, they should, and they should be breaking uh, Warrington down out wide, because they have got that pace, John Henderson has got a lot of pace, and that's what they're going to do, because you can't beat Warrington down the middle, but a big pack and he tackle well. forward the kick just a yard too far and doesn't he know it Mike Ford he grinned to himself crack a nickel customer this number seven and this is a very very well judged kick by uh, Michael Ford watch the bounce of the ball it could go anywhere this ball it's very very close and young Crompton just lets it go Mike Gregory, setting the example, always in the thick of the play. <laughs> what's, what's John Cunning, John Cogger, like climbing up a tree? Yes, I think uh, there's a little bit of needle between them two. Two number 13s, uh, the great Britain loose forward Mike Gregory and John Cogger, they've got a lot of pride at stake in this game.
Good play by Warrington there. Three or four players coming up to make that kick effective. Keep Oldham around this 25-yard area. Oh, good run by Ford. Now then, looking for the support on his outside. None there, although to a certain extent, I think Alec, he ran away from the support, didn't yes, he? but he's the danger man, he's the man who's got uh, the, the ability to break this Warrington, and I, I think really what Warrington have got to do is close him down a bit quicker. And Brett Clark losing the ball. Warrington back in possession. Only two second division sides reached semi-finals before York in 84 Halifax in 80 Gregory that's a good kick can he get the bounce and that was fortuitous Richard Irving good tackle by Burke that's good covering superb tackle by Tony Burke I think Alex, we might have no points yet, but I really do think that sooner or later, with this tackling and this heat, somebody's going to collapse. Yes, at some somebody's stage. got a crack, and uh, you know we might have it just this minute. Casey, he's got. Oh, he's looked the wrong side. He looked the wrong way. Tremendous run there by Leo Casey. Fieldhouse was inside him, but tremendous play from Oldham. Ford again, the little kick. And into touch, touching goal. David Lyon will have to drop out. Well, you've got to put this down to uh, inexperience. Leo Casey, he, he, he does everything right, only Luke. He doesn't look to his left, he doesn't look to his right, and he takes the wrong option. Could be very costly, that could. And Oldham a chance to regain possession from that dropout to Richard Irving. Former amateur with the Mould Green Club. John Allen. Both sides had a couple of breaks, Ali, but not really taking advantage of them. No, no points on the board, but Oldham are coming back into this game now. They're making one of oh, the breaks. That's tremendous play! He's got support, Carver, that's a good tackle, and he's lost the ball. Tremendous cover tackle from Dwayne Mander, the number nine for Warrington. And that's the story of this game so far. Last ditch tackles, tremendous covering from both sides. Sanderson sensibly bringing the ball away from the acting half back position, settling the game down before the kick now from Lyon. And Warrington looking a little under pressure, Ali. Yes, Warrington look as though they cracked him, but that's a cracking kick from Young Lions. That's the heartbreaker, isn't it? You know, that really drives the players back. Up conditions and a great kick. Now, this is where I think Oldham slip up here. The, uh, young Ford takes the wrong option here. He's got men outside. The short ball was on here and, he, and chose John Codder. What a great tackle from Dream, Dwayne Mann. And what a good kick there from... David Lyon, from almost scoring at one end, defending at the other, Oldham. Interception. This lad man really gets around the field. He's about 14 and a half stone for a hooker. They've just paid uh, 22,000 pounds there to buy his contract out, and uh, that's why they think he's a good player. I think he's the best hooker in the world at present. Steve Malloy played against France in the under 21s recently. This. Uh, Malloy and uh, Oldham, good win there over Widnes, tremendous win, Huddersfield working in Salford, but it was that win against Widnes, the 
a team that have spent a lot of money, 16 points to four, that really deserve to get them here. Warrington, again, the third round win is always the vital one. Featherston and Trafford Butter, not too much trouble, but the Bradford Northern win at Bradford was the clincher. This lad Irving looks a strong lad, Alec. He, he has been a centre. Well, it's number two. Warrington players to pull him down now, but we're getting one or two gaps in this uh, Warrington defence now. All of them are taking the ball forward a little bit more, and with a bit better support, could be in front. Pugger to Platt, and Platt's having an influence. He's a big strong. Oh, that's a bad pass. Well, good break there by Duncan Platt, the number one, the fullback. He's coming more and more into this game. He's obviously enjoying himself, but a little bit more attention to the pass. I think both teams, Ray, are uh, wasting a little bit of possession in very, very important positions. They get into the target area and then putting the ball down. And again, not in line. Des Drummond questioning quizzically the, the touch zones, but Mr. Holsworth very, very firm that he was not in line, parallel for the play of the ball. So, Oldham on the attack again. Some of this tackling really quite ferocious. And none better than that number nine there, Dwayne Mann for Warrington. Russell. Clark, Foy. Very quick lad, this number three. Had a spell with the Newcastle Knights in Australia. Cogger. Again, going from acting half back position, he, he likes it that. Now then, we haven't had a score yet. The sixth tackle, certainly think worth a drop goal, Alec. You know, I think we do need some encouragement from one side or the other. Well, obviously, you can see that there's no uh, drop goal specialist on either side because both sides have had positions and been in a position to drop a goal but not took the chance. Mick Ford uh, relies on the little grubber kick through every time, and I think a change of play wouldn't be a bad thing. Just ten minutes to go then in this first half and nothing separating these two sides. I think Warrington probably lacking uh, Paul Bishop for the drop goal stakes. I mean, he's one who really does uh, put them over. Yes, uh, but it, we've got to look outside that. I think uh, this game could do with a try now and uh, both sides are putting the ball down in vital areas. Compton. Good strong game from this lad. Drafted in just a couple of hours before kickoff. This is good now from Warrington. Well picked up. Good dummy, good play by Sanderson. Now then, Malloy is looking for Drummond. Just couldn't find the space, just couldn't find the space. Good cover there again by Ford. And there is the first drop. Oh, it's just, just why? Good attempt there from David Lyon. Good attempt, well worth it. He has kicked one earlier this season, inches wide. I think if David Lyon had just took his time a little bit more with that ball, he'd plenty of time to have a go. It just, it just whizzed past the post and it just shows you one point is important. Just to get in front is very, very important. And we can see number 15 there, Neil Harmon, already on the field for Steve Malloy. And it'd be interesting, I think, Harmon was straight up to that prop forward position. Mr. Holsworth insistent, telling these two packs to get back. Offside, yes. Offside against Cogger, the number 13. Now then. Differential penalty. I think he's uh, penalised John Cogger for coming out of the scrum now. This is a very, very uh, important kick here. Is he going to kick for touch? 
uh, David Lyon normally kicked for Tugs. Rocky Turner must have thought he could kick for goal. Yes, I don't think they realise it was John Cogger coming out of the scrum alley, detaching himself from the scrum. Yes, you cannot kick a goal in that position. But you can score tries from this one. Sanderson. But not with handling like that. I think when Gary Sanderson raised, just checking his eye off the ball, that's, uh, you know, a couple of times now he's put the ball down. Uh, he needs to settle because Warrington are losing the ball in vital positions on the first tackle. Mr Holdsworth having a problem with these uh, these two props, Leo Casey not wanting to get down. But Oldham ball. Cogger. That's the third time he's come away from that acting half-back position. Always gained six or seven yards. Fieldhouse, risky pass. And it's advantage. I think, I think it's Oldham ball, Ray. Uh, you know, Warrington had two bites of the cherry there and didn't come up with the ball. Neither side really uh, seen a tackle, uh, Alec, are they? Well, when you think that Oldham have never been to Wembley and Warrington have not been in 15 years, Ray, it's important the first goal, and I think that's why we're having so many uh, drop balls and uh, ball put to ground. Forster, very fast lad, a sprinter if he can just get away. Just under six minutes left in this first half. Still no score. Oldham nil, Warrington nil. We've had just five scoreless semi-finals in our time. In fact, Oldham featured in a scoreless semi-final way back in 1903. But somehow, I think there'll be points in the second half. And again, Alec, that's the fourth occasion that a team have been penalised for not playing the ball correctly. Well, I think that's uh, very, very bad. And uh, young Gary Sanderson, again, uh, playing the ball in, you know, in front of the man when he had a man behind him. You cannot do that, and that is a bad penalty at this stage of the game. Puts Oldham on the attack. Courtesy of this man, Duncan Platts. The Oldham crowd just beginning to get behind them now. I think possibly they sense that they might have weathered the storm from Warrington. I think if there is a time to score a, a try or any points on the board, now is the time because we're just coming up to half-time and it's very, very important whoever goes in front at half-time will have all the confidence in the second half. Cogger. To Platt. Platt. Very, very effective, coming up every occasion. He's a big lad, Alec, isn't he? Yes, he is, and he's uh, very strong when he's got the ball. Fieldhouse, now then, that's a good kick from Fieldhouse. It's a chase, but too far. But very intelligent kick here from this number 10. He knew he couldn't get the pass around. He almost sort of needed the ball rather than kicked it. Well, a little bit great by John Fieldhouse, but I do think he'd have been uh, advised to hold the ball. It's only the fifth tackle. He goes through the gap, he tries to kick it. I think he hits his knee, but it's a lovely kick, just a little bit too far. And a knock-on again. Rocky Turner lost the ball. Well, that's the fourth occasion that Warrington have been penalised or lost possession at the play of the ball. So, I mean, that's 24 tackles, Alec, in well, effect. Well, it is, and in these conditions, you just can't afford to do that. But I think Brian Johnson at half-time will say to the lads, we've got to keep hold of this ball, we've got to play basic rugby, do simple things right. And here's this man, Platt, again. And a good tackle from Bob Jackson, but Oldham still on the attack. Leo Casey, number eight, beginning to grow in confidence now, this Oldham side. 10 yards from the Warrington line, Mike Ford. 
good tackle from Sanderson, read the situation well. Just three minutes to go in this half, nil-nil. Little Brett Clark. To Lord. Could be a dangerous kick. Yes. Tackled over the line. A dropout. Good tackle. One or two of the Warrington players, Alec, thinking that it was caught actually behind the line, but I don't think it was. Well, I think one or two of the Warrington lads was looking for a penalty because Desi Drummond, who was uh, taking off the ball, and I think he looked at a touch for some help and didn't get any. Richard Irving. Now, what price a little chip over the top there? It was, uh, it was on, wasn't it? But it is the first tackle. Well, I think, uh, like I said, points are very, very important now. And I wouldn't be surprised if they took this ball down and dropped a goal because they do need some points. Forward. Casey. Russell. Well, really, no way through. Ford again, look for the support to Brett Clark. Oh, he's found it. Oh, Des Foy had a chance. Des Foy had a chance. Brett Clark, possibly the smallest man on the field, found the gap. But Warrington coming away, and surely Warrington now, with just minutes ago before half time, they'll use these forwards. And they do. And I think you could put that down as a chance because uh, it was a lovely break by Brett Clark, and uh, if he'd have held the ball, uh, Foy, he must have been in with a chance of scoring. Man. Just one minute to go in this first half. Both sides looking for the advantage. Mike Ford doing a lot of running, this lad, number seven. A lot of probing, a lot of movement, a lot of play coming from him. Cogger. I do get the feeling though, Alec, these uh, Oldham players are getting more and more confident as the game goes on. Here's a chance now. Now then, was he obstructed? No, says Mr. Holsworth. Man again. People clinging onto each other for dear life, Alec. Well, I think uh, no side will uh, want to give points away in this first half now. It's so near to half time. Well, it's nearer than we think, Alec. There it is. Warrington nil, Oldham nil. A tight battle, almost like a game of chess, but appreciated by those spectators. And none worked harder than number 13, an Oldham skipper, Van Cogger. I think he'll be reflecting on the chances that's gone begging on it. Well, I think it's all down to now what the coach does in the dressing room. It's very important what these two coaches say. Well, let's hope for some tries in the second half. What it's a nil, Oldham nil. Lord at half time, Alex Murphy and Ray French. Yes, as you say, there's still no score, still defences well on top, and neither side, Alec, being able to pierce them. Well, that's right. It's about the uh, what, who's going to score first. And George Ma uh, Mann, then Dwayne Mann, really had a chance to put Warrington in front. Just shaved the post with a drop roll, but we do need a try. Michael Ford having a very good game, this lad. Very influential. He is at least creating some half chances. And Brett Clark. Duncan Platt taking his time. Sensibly there, didn't rush it, Duncan Platt. Took his time, that ball could have bounced awkwardly on this very hard, dry pitch. Just five minutes gone in this second half. Cogger. Not seen John Cogger out wide, have we? He's been a little bit too near the rooks to be effective. Uh, no, he's Alec. playing too uh, close to the rooks, like you say, Ray, but it's uh, important now that we do get one or two of these quicker lads uh, running with the ball. The tackle is still very, very good. Warrington have not given all them many chances and uh, closing them down very quickly. Clark, good play, good footwork. That's a good ball. Now then, this lad's a speedster. 
but he's in touch with a forward pass. I thought he, I thought he hesitated and looked round, Alec. He must have sensed it was a forward pass. Well, you do one thing in this game, you play to the whistle, and uh, the lad did exactly right. But uh, John Holdsworth waited up with play and had no hesitation. Having a good game, John Holdsworth. Uh, took a little time early season to, I think, really settle into his uh, top quality, but he is certainly there now. Good ball to Drummond. But a good tackle by Henderson. Bob I think, Jackson. I think again there, uh, we had a complicated move when uh, just basic football will be all right. I think Wannington really seem to be putting all that emphasis on this pack, Alec. They're, if they're playing it short, Turner, Crompton, putting the ball to the forwards, driving in. Well, they are definitely a bigger pack, but I do believe that uh, it's going to be one of these uh, three quarters who's going to have to win the match for them. That's a tricky kick. And it's a dropout. Very difficult baller for Irving to judge. He didn't know the bounce, whether it was going to go into touching goal, but uh, at least no points. Warrington, six appearances at Wembley, won the cup two times. But 15 years since they last appeared in 75. Both these sides, I think, Alec, tiring a little. I think this heat now beginning to have an effect. Well, it's very, very warm out there, but I do believe that uh, both sides are playing it wrong. You've got to move this ball out wide. If you want to go to Wembley, you can't win matches going down the middle. Very tense situation here for both sets of fans. Know that just a break, a penalty... A half chance can ruin somebody's dream of Wembley. Richard Russell. Cogger. Now then, this is a chance for Oldham. The nearest to the line for a considerable time. Leo Casey looks fired up, number eight here. Suddenly, the momentum behind them, the crowd warning them on. And I think both sets of supporters now they realise that the first scorer is going to be crucial in this game, and Oldham can sense that and in the right position to do something about it. Clark sensibly playing the blind side. Oh, I don't think he should have kicked there. But it's a knock on. He should get the advantage. A kick, well, it was fortuitous. Knock on. But I think he would have been better advised to pass. The great roars of Oldham. Oldham now ringing round this Central Park ground. As they do, they win the ball. Six more tackles for them. Duncan Platt. I get the impression that this lad, Duncan Platt, could be one to force the gap, Alec. But it looks like Oldham are going to seize the chance there because they're putting a lot of pressure on Wellington, they're taking the ball to him, and I think they do realise a try at this time of the game is probably the most important thing in the game. Short ball. Well, stolen the ball, yes. Oh, it's Oldham ball back again. Lyon lost it. Six more tackles. To Ford, that's a good ball. He must be in. Yes, he's in. Oh, tremendous opportunist try. Richard Irving, quickly taken, flicked out there by the halfback, and Richard Irving was able to just drop over the line. Oldham four, Warrington nil, and the try that we've all been looking for. Can this be a million dollar try? This is the one, a lovely ball from Mick Ford, touches a Warrington player, Irvine thought it's never going to come down, but it eventually does. 
And all oh, that chance for Irving came. His 13th try of the season, that lost ball on the line. But Oldham seemed to raise a gear, they seemed to move up. The crowd got behind them. And that's four points towards the Wembley dream. So, Duncan Platt, kick out on the touchline, very strong, kicker of a ball, 103 goals to his credit, had a lot of practice in the second division with Oldham and it's a vital one this, it looks a good one, oh it is, a magnificent kick, a magnificent kick from Platt. That's the sort of goal kick to send those fans in delight. Six points to nil for Oldham. And you can sense confidence oozing in the Malik. Well, I think that was a very, very important kick. That is the kind of kick that takes you to Wembley. Here we have the track. Let's look at the goal on this. Just look how hard he whacks this ball. It's going all the way. Them's the kind of goals that take you all the way to Wembley. But still a long, long time to go yet from Warrington. A powerful side. What a game this number seven's having, Alec. Uh, Mike Ford. Yes, he's responsible for the making of the try. And all the look as though they've got that little step in the stride now. They've got that first important try. And this fellow, Mick Ford, has been in everything what's moved. And there he is again. He's dictating, he's dominating by the passing or kicking. And I think he knows, I think, there are still some Great Britain spots open for this tour. He went on tour in 84. He's hoping I think he'd probably get back again. Well, I think he wants to prove a point, but I'm pleased the way he's playing the game. He's driving Warrington back with deep kicks, he's putting some lovely short balls out, and really, he's probably running the man and bats by a mile now. And it looks as though we're going to have a, a substitute. Mark Thomas, possibly for Tony Burke on the Warrington side. I think you'll find now, Ray, that uh, Oldham will not want to give anything away. They'll all be eager to do the work and tackle and help one another. And uh, Warrington have really got to get back in this game very quickly. Man. Good tackle again by Cogger. He might weigh only about 13 stone. Very light for the forward, but he packs every pound. And a high tackle. Mr Jackson, the... The touch judge obviously spotted some misdemeanor there on Mark Thomas. Possibly a high tackle, I think. Keith Newton, having a word with Keith Newton. I don't think uh, very malicious. Just saying, keep it down. And Cogger, the good captaincy. At the side, settling the player down. Can you imagine what's going to happen, Ray, if uh, this is the final score? Oldham Rugby League Football Club, first appearance at Wembley. Oldham Soccer Club, first appearance at Wembley. There'll be a burglar's paradise in Oldham. Well, I think uh, Warrington here will be looking to steal a try. Thomas. Still. And referee Mr. Holdsworth uh, sensibly stopping play immediately. Play can go on with an injury, but I think he sensed that that looked a bad one. The player's boot caught his eye. It was a good tackle. But Brett Clark looks to be okay. Play on, play on. So, can Warrington pull back that 6 0? Thomas, Harmon.
Gregory, now then, this is good play from Warrington. Pounding in with these forwards. Weighing about half to stone a man bigger than, than Oldham. Crompton looks for support, doesn't find it. <laughs> Test of the Oldham defence here. That's a good ball. That's a very... Oh, Drummond must be offside. No question about it. We've got to allow the receiver five yards. And Des Drummond was even tackling Platt before he caught it. No question of that. And the referee, Mr Holsworth, having a word with the, with the policeman. I think he wants one or two of the crowd back behind the uh, behind the wall now then he's having a word with the uh, with the touch mr jackson mystery here alex well, I couldn't see what happened. There's got to be something behind the goalpost here, and uh, obviously John Ulrich is not happy about it. He wants it sorted out, and I think he's the kind of guy who will get it sorted out. And we're back to the penalty for Oldham. I think one of the problems, Alec, was that people were they're pretty well packed behind the terrace there, possibly encroaching onto the pitch. It was just a little bit near to the uh, advertising uh, boards, but... Uh, I think what, what they're doing, they're, uh, the lads are a little bit uh, enthusiastic and they want to get as near to the players as possible. Fieldhouse. Looks to get the ball away. Oldham wanting now slowly to work their way out. Cogger. And I think we'll see a Ray, another Mick Ford kick here. And he realises you cannot score if you didn't know it half. Newton, one of these bargain buys by Tony Barrow. This whole side cost him just a hundred thousand pounds, two or three ten thousand pound buys in the pack. Another good tackle there by Man, and the sixth tackle. Warrington done a good containing job there, kept Oldham in the half. Now they must kick forward to Lyon. Man again coming away from this acting half back position. We've seen a lot of that by both Cogger for Oldham and Man. Foster. Oldham still leading six points to nil. Just the one Richard Irving try and the black conversion from the touchline. Oldham three times in the Challenge Cup final, but all those previous cup wins were at Manchester, Leeds, and here at Wigan, long before Wembley was constructed. Oh, that's a good run by Crompton. Wasn't tackled to man. Now then, the pressure on them. Well, it was the sixth tackle. And on the sixth tackle, the handover. Oldham sensibly, wisely driving in with the forwards here, there, they're in command, they're six points to nil up, semi-finals, very often may not be spectacular, it's just the passage to Wembley. I think the ball down the field uh, is the right option here, eh? because uh, obviously uh, Oldham are in front and keeping them under pressure is very, very important. That's a good... Uh, Oh, good effort, good kick. Yes. David Lyon arguing with the touch touch there, Mr Jackson. He felt the ball went out on the full. But the touch touch is the sole arbiter. Mr Holdsworth not happy with that.
dropped into feed. Good heel, good clean heel to Drummond. Coggard out very quickly there to cover Des Drummond, who came in off the wing. Yes, I think he spotted him in the first one. Uh, but uh, Wallington now really have got to take all chances and, and throw the ball about. They've got to support the man with the ball because every time there's a break, there's no Wallington players about. Man. But Wallington still concentrating in this. Down the middle, using these forwards. Look at the break. And moving nearer to the Oldham line. Crompton to Gregory, that's a good run. Thomas. Good work in these forwards, very good work, very good close work, but not really taking them over the line. The sixth tackle, he must kick, here's a chance! Oh, has he got a touch to the ball? No, he hasn't. Good work there by Bob Jackson. Sharp work by that second row. And how close was this to a try for Wallington? A lovely little chip by Mike Thomas. Did he get his fingers to him? Did he push it? No, he didn't. Good work there by um. Probably, Ray, I think this is Wallington's uh, best attacking spell. They're putting Oldham under a lot of pressure now, and uh, surely they've got to come away with something from this position. And I think it's interesting, uh, Alec, Tony Barrow warming a substitute forward on. I think he thinks uh, one or two of his pack might be tiring. Yes, I think that's a very sensible thing to do, because it's very, very warm out there. One or two of these lads have really given their all, and uh, it's going to be a survival of the fittest. But at least all credit to Oldham, they've tackled well, they've kept this big Wellington pack out. That's a good kick, but that's a good drop. Well worth the effort there from Crompton. Mr Holdsworth, stopping play. Keith Newton's a very big man, he may have twisted his knee as he got down there. You can see those forwards just taking a breather. John Cogger, yet never stops talking, still firing his pack up. Platt, a big enough lad at full back to help the forwards out. a bad drop, puts Warrington on the attack, now then, ten yards out, five tackles to go, trailing six points, Thomas, and the, the crowd gasped then when Thomas stretched for that ball, Alan. Well, I think Warrington do realise they've been under uh, in this position for a long time now, they must go from this position and uh, if they do, the game's wide open again. Just five yards now from the Oldham line, Wires desperate for a try. Thomas again, looking for the short ball. Good ball, he's got it too! It's a try! Oh, yes! I said Mark Thomas was looking for the short ball. Crompton was outside him. And the lad who was only drafted in a couple of hours before this match, well, could he be Warrington's saviour? Reply that was needed and was given. Lovely ball from Mark Thomas. And young Crompton's onto this like a flash. Good out packs, don't miss them, and that's what Warrington wanted. So, six points to four, and interesting, all of them drinking water, pouring water on their heads. It's getting warmer and warmer here. And a difficult kick for Rocky Turner. Is it going through? Yes, it is. He's got it. It's there. So, Turner levels the scores. It's all squared again. Oldham six, Warrington six.
And could we still have a replay on the cards, Alec? Well, now you'll see what the try has done for Warrington. And this is what we have, and this is how it started. This is a lovely little ball here from Mark Thomas, and well received by young Crompton. A lovely ball, thank you very much. Here it comes, and he puts it away. And just 14 minutes to go then in this Silk Cup Challenge Cup semi-final. All square, six points each. And as we predicted, Tony Barrow brought Keith Atkinson the substitute on for Sean Allen. Certainly, he needs a fresh forward. And there is Atkinson straight into the tackle. And I think you've got to be saying now, what price a drop goal? Because uh, one or two of these lads realise that one point could take them to Wembley. And I think that could be the Warrington tactic, Alec, using this pack, driving it down the middle, they're making inroads, possibly for Lyon to put a drop over. Well, I think you play for possession, and this is what Warrington are doing. They know they're tackling well and keeping hold and pinning their own half. They've got every chance to do that. I just look there now. Eight Warrington players followed up that ball. And Ray, uh, just looking at one or two of these Oldham lads, is the pace beginning to tell? Because we've got to realise that Oldham are a second division uh, side. They've not been playing any top-class uh, first division sides, and I think the pace might be just telling a little bit. Well, I think it'll be the fittest side that wins. Forward, that's a good ball. Well, certainly Keith Atkins has got a haircut to suit this weather, Alec. Yes, He'll not I think be sweating. It's, uh, a natty line of haircuts, Ray. I think uh, lads have taken his haircuts very seriously. And that's a magnificent kick, and that's just what Oldham needed to relieve the pressure. And once again, it was that scrum half. Mike Ford. We've seen some really good touch finders from him this afternoon. I think there's got to be a real thing brought back in this game, Ray, where the man who kicks the ball gets the head in the ball because uh, you waste a good kick by not getting the ball. Drummond. Puffle lad, and that was a good tackle too. Now then, it's a chase. Man comes up with it. So it should be another six tackles. Ford kicked the ball through. Offside. I think they can uh, thank uh, Dwayne Manray, that's two drive-saving tackles that lad's made. He got back on that ball very, very quickly. And, uh, you know, he's a big lad and uh, I can understand now why they've paid £22,000 to buy his contract away from New Zealand. He's had a magnificent game and no wonder he's got his hands on his hips. Lyon relieving the line. Both sides now desperate for possession. And to hold it. Jackson, this is a test of the forwards now, in this heat, in this strong tackling. Who will keep coming running up for the ball? Who takes it at first receiver? This sorts forwards out. And I'll be honest, Ray, there's no room for faint outs out there now. It's really getting down to the nitty-gritty. There's a little bit of needle getting in this game, and that is a bad time for anybody to give a penalty away. Silly. Certainly, as we approach these... Final ten minutes, discipline will count. And this is a thing that Brian Johnson, the Warrington coach, Ray, has worked on because Warrington didn't have best discipline record in the rugby league, but they have improved and improved, and I think if they get in this position, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if drop goals on the cards. In fact, all of them have been penalised on ten occasions, Alec. Yes, and that is the difference, you know, little uh, silly penalties which could cost you a match. So, Warrington then on the attack again now, Sanderson. And this Warrington pack beginning to cause some problems. Gregory looking for support. I do get the feeling, Ray, in this game that the pace has stepped up a little bit and Warrington are angling a little bit better. Now then, are we looking for a drop goal? Dwayne Mann directing things from the acting half-back position. Here's a chance, no. Well taken by Clark. Just ten minutes to go. Oldham six, Warrington six. And again, uh, taking the wrong option, really, Ray, on the fifth tackle. I, I think uh, if they'd have waited, everybody knew what was going on. Going on. Platt. Can Oldham come back? The oohs and the ahs from the crowd as these tackles are going in. Foy. Back to Ford.
That's a good ball. That's a better ball to Irving now then. Oh, he's got men outside him. He went himself. In the sixth tackle. Forward. Atkinson. Well, it was worth a pass, it was worth a gamble. It was the sixth tackle. I think he's, uh, if, if Desi Drummond had caught that ball, Ray, I don't think he'd have thought it was a perfect pass. I think it was the handover, and this is both sides now taking chances. Drummond. Jackson. And that's the difference, Alec. Every time a Warrington forward has it, they move forward 10 yards. Yes, I think if I had to uh, put my money on uh, anybody in this game now, I think Warrington just look as though they've got the edge. They look a little bit fitter than what uh, the Oldham lads are, and maybe the pace is beginning to tell. Sanderson. Well. Tony Barrow still got another substitute up his sleeve. He can bring Carl Furbank on, he is another forward. But if you have a look again, uh, there's three Warrington players down on that tackle. I do believe now that uh, they've got this game sorted out if they just settle the game down. Oldham desperate to get down the other end. Forward. Looking to surprise Oldman opening. Irving, looked a strong runner. I don't think there's as much coming out of Oldham now. They've, uh, you know, they realise that they've been under pressure for a long time. Well taken by Lyon. To Drummond. Good ball to Dwayne Mann. Certainly had a good game, this number nine. Dwayne Mann, Drummond again. Good tackle by Atkinson, seven minutes to go, still six points each. You can certainly see the tactics, what's going to happen here, eh? It's on the card, a drop goal at any time. Yes. Mercer. Well, Mercer's checking it away from the post, here's the sixth tackle. It's coming back to Turner, 15 yards out. Left-footed, oh, good stop, good stop by Mike Ford. And that was bouncing as well. Very good stop at the drop goal there by Ford. He got up there, and he stopped Turner. But it does look as if Oldham are tiring rapidly. And I think the most important thing about it is that Warrington have got the ball back. Mercer. I think if they take the ball closer to the post, they're doing it on the wrong option, they're doing it on the fifth and sixth kick, and all of them are aware of that. Drummond. I think that's exactly what Des Drummond's doing, Alec, he's just running in field there. That's a good pass to Turner. I think from a position like this now, Ray, is the ideal opportunity, because nobody's aware of it. Thomas. Oh, that's a good ball to Foster, he's in! Yes! I said earlier on in this match that Mark Foster had speed. He's a sprinter. And that pass floated out there. He gave him a yard. He was in at the corner. Tremendous try. And a tremendous pass. And I do believe it was from Mark Thomas again. Yes, and it was from the lad who we said, Ray, the only man, what a great substitution this has been. He's been involved, this boy has been involved with both tries. A beautiful ball to Mark Foster. And he's saying, I give you the pass, you finish it up for me. And here we see a perfect ex example, a beautiful ball here. Just watch this. Misses one man out, Mark Foster, the man with pace. And I'll tell you what, that try is worth £1 million to Warrington. And if you've got pace like that, you can do it. So, Turner, looking for the vital extra two points that would make Oldham score twice. It's coming round, but no, it's to the left. So, still a chance for Oldham to get back. Ten points to six now for Warrington. 
Four points difference and four minutes to go. And we did say, didn't we, about the pace. We did say that Warrington were coming back into the game and maybe the second division pace is beginning to tell because Warrington have took the ball there for the last 10 or 15 minutes and really put to Oldham under the cosh. And Tony Burke coming back on, substitutes. Gary Mercer coming off. He has been in difficulties for Warrington. Gary Mercer. And Carl Furbank coming on for four minutes. And I think that's a gamble, Ray, that's really paid off with Gary Mercer because he's had three injections uh, in the last few hours and obviously they paid on. And uh, there we have the Oldham substitute, Carl Furbanks, raising Poss the action early. Possibly, Alec, the Oldham substitute could have come on a little bit earlier. The pack is tiring. Yes, the pack have tired very quickly. And uh, this is a chance for Oldham. Uh, Wellington have made a mistake. It's Oldham ball. And this is what now and ever. So, coming up for three minutes, left in this game, Oldham trailing by four points. Ford to feed, and he does. To Desfoy. Five tackles to go, 15 yards out. Oldham must score a try and convert. Three minutes to go, John Cogger. Ten yards from the line. Now then, Oldham, a new lease of life. Little Ford again. Looks for Furbank's dropped it. And I think that could have been the last chance for Oldham Ray because that was a ball to Carl Furbanks. Young Mike Ford popped the ball up and Furbanks put it down. Yeah, it was a simple ball, Alec. Yes, and you must take them chances at this stage of the game. Seconds ticking away. Warrington will want to hold this ball for dear life. Ten points to six. I was walking down the tunnel there, uh, Ray before the game and Tony Barry came to me and said the Oldham coach thank God you've not picked us well for once in my life I looked as though I've got something right <laughs> Lyon good catch two minutes left ten points to six Oldham desperate to get 50 yards further on they must get down towards that line Duncan Platt Warrington tackling for dear life. Ford, what a game that lad's had. Fieldhouse. And I think really, Ray, if there's been anything to have won the game for Warrington, it's been their tackling. They've tackled magnificently throughout the game. Ford to Furbank again. Still time. Two tackles to go in this sequence. They've got to move it. Oh, this is Fieldhouse to Cogger. Well, John Cogger, a golden opportunity just missed there. And it was that man, Dwayne Mann, who got back. Well, I, I can understand. I bet Warrington are happy they've kept this fella back. He's saved three searching tries, and that was another fold him. One minute left, and Warrington. Six tackles to go through. Des Drummond playing the old soldier, getting up very slowly. I think John Oldsworth wasn't having none of it. He just said to him, I've seen all this before, Does he get up and play the ball. Warrington just got to hold on to this ball, cling on to it, 30 seconds coming up. Sanderson. Whistles all around the ground from the Warrington fans. And Dwayne Mann, well, is that a penalty? I think he was looking to get away with that there because he definitely passed the ball off the floor and is this the last chance for Oldham? Coming into injury time now, there is a little time, it's Oldham still on the attack to Furbank. Into injury time, ten points to six for Warrington. Oh, that's into touch. And I think we've got the, the whistlers out, Ray. The Wellington fans are, are blowing for time. The Mr. Oldsworth, blow the whistle now. We're on our way to Wembley. Well, this should be Wellington's head and ball. And it is. Surely that's the last chance for Oldham. They've worked hard. They've played hard. And what a tremendous effort for the second division side to get so near and yet 
it does appear that that dream of Wembley is as far away as ever. Sanderson. It's been a very, very hard uh, semi-final raid. They've given nothing away both sides, and both sides have played well. Well, Warrington missed out at the semi-final stage last year. They lost to Wigan. And I'm sure now they're going to relish the chance of gaining their revenge at Wembley. And during that uh, break up to the line, Ray, we had Man again put the ball deep. He's not only stopping tries, he's actually putting them in. Oldham in possession, but a long way to go. Ford uh, taking the kick, number seven, the man of the match. But I'm sure this little scrum half would swap that £250 award for a try at the other end. Well into injury time. Oldham desperate. Ford. Good ball. Now then, Lord! I thought he was going in there, Alec. Well, that was a great tackle by uh, young David Lyon. Is this Oldham's last chance? Are they going to take it? Because they're throwing everything at Warrington. Cogger on the blind side, Ford. The little chip, the wingman's in! He's there! No! He's given offside! Mr Holsworth has given offside! John Holsworth has washed the try, a superb kick from Ford. Well, you've got to say that this will be talked about for a long, long time. Was he offside? Was he not? That looked very debatable to me. This could go down as the biggest talking point for a long time. Well, whatever, Mr Holsworth's made the decision. He said that the Oldham wingman, Paul Lord, was offside. And there it is, there's the hooter. That last second try, it doesn't count. George Mann all the way from New Zealand. Auckland, what a game he's had. And now he knows he's at Wembley. Warrington, the first visit since 1975. Just Tony Burke of the players, his experience of playing there. But Alec, I'm sure it'll be an intriguing contrast well, for Wigan. Well, it's been a very hard game. I think Warrington's just about deserved to win it. And every consolation to Oldham. They fought magnificently. But in the end, that Wembley hoodoo remains. Oldham 6, Warrington 10. Well, they were unlucky in the end, Oldham. Warrington against Wigan on April the 28th. The Challenge Cup final will be live for you on Grandstand. A couple of football...